It's just holding it together. Okay, that's got no trouble going on in there. That's quite nice. Not so good. <laughs> okay, I think we cracked it. Mm. Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology and my super duper uber Surface Pro Audio, Surface Pro comparison shootout. The idea is that I've pulled together the last three generations of Surface Pro in order to see, well, not which one's best exactly, but just to compare them to see what each of them is capable of. Because I get a lot of people saying, well, you know, I could pick up a Surface Pro 4, dead cheap, is that any good? Is the, the Surface Pro 2017 as good as the Surface Pro 6? Or how much is this one better than this one? Can I run four plugins on that one and five plugins on that one? Tell me, tell me, people, people keep asking me. And so I thought, well, there probably is a really healthy secondhand market in the older generations. And with each new iteration, what are we actually getting for that? Are we getting a huge leap in technology? Because the processors inside each one are different. They are next generation processors down the line. So even though they're still called i5 and i7 because Intel refused to give us anything helpful, they are different. And so they should perform differently. Or do they? That's a question I hope to answer. So three systems onto which I will throw some audio tests. Now I'm not interested in 3D benchmarks or running some kind of automatic piece of software that tests out a system. No, we want to check out proper audio performance. That means plug-in counts. That means VST instruments, virtual instruments, glitch-free, continuous, real-time, low-latency audio playback. That's what we're interested in. Oh yes. Now each of these systems has been tweaked according to the tweak videos that are already in my channel. And it will be very important to note that each of these will be restricted to kind of their base frequency because that's the most stable place to be. So there'll be no turboing going on, no chance of thermal throttling or any sort of weirdness. We're looking for stable audio playback. The other thing is, and very uncharacteristic for me, is that I'm not going to go into masses of detail about the whole thing. I've just done a nice big fat hour video on the Surface Pro 6 and its audio performance and plug-in testing and virtual instruments and all that jazz. And I talked about it at length, about what I was doing and where I was going and how it was all coming together. So go and check out that video if you're interested in a deep analysis of the tests. All I'm trying to do here in this test is see can this one run more plugins than this one? Can this one run more plugins than this one? That's the gist of it, yeah? Right, so what's the setup? What are the three? Well, with all of my Surface Pros, I've always opted for the i5 eight gigabyte. That to me has just stood there as the sweet spot in terms of value, price, performance, uh, cooling, thermal questions, all those sorts of things come together and point at the i5 8 gig being the one to choose. So each one of those, each one of these is one of those. And I have the Surface Pro 6 i5 8 gigabytes, the Surface Pro, we want to call it the Surface Pro 5, but strange reasons they decided not to do that. So it's the Surface Pro 2017 or Surface Pro 5, the i5 8 gig version, and then I've got the Surface Pro 4, the i5 8 gig versions. All of them running Windows 10, all of them updated to within an inch of their lives, and all of them running pretty much perfectly as little audio production studios. We're not gonna be dealing with onboard sound or ASIO for all anything like that. We're gonna be plugging in an audio interface. This fella here, the Native Instruments Complete Audio 2. It's a great little interface. I've done a complete review of that in the channel if you wanna check it out. And we're gonna be running at a buffer size of 256 samples on each machine to keep the latency at just around under 10 milliseconds, and that will be the level that we'll run at. I also might play some synths a bit on this. I'm not sure yet, I'm kind of making this up as we go. Now the actual processors they're running on the Surface Pro 6 is the Core i5-8250U, and that has a base speed of 1.6 gigahertz. The 2017 model is the i5-7300U, and its base frequency is 2.6 gigahertz. Surface Pro 4 
is an i5-6300U processor, and that runs at 2.4 gigahertz. So it's quite possible that the extra gigahertz available in these two machines may have something to say about the processor here. It's interesting, it's a dark art, these Ultrabook processors, because the processors in each of these systems is designed to shut itself down. It's designed to run at as low power as possible and to be as slow as possible, which I know that sounds weird, but that's just the nature of these sorts of processors. And so what we want in music technology and audio production is a processor that runs at a steady rate. But these sorts of processors like to shut themselves down, as you'll find in any Ultrabook. And I talk much more about this in my video on the Surface Pro 6, so I don't want to get distracted by that. The other thing I should say is that this is a quad-core. Surface Pro 6 is a quad-core. Surface Pro 2017 is a dual-core. And so is the Surface Pro 4. So higher gigahertz, fewer cores. More cores, lower gigahertz. It's going to be interesting how all this pans out. I'm already interested because I haven't pre-done these tests. I'm uh, literally about to do them. So this is going to be fun. So what tests am I going to run then? Well, each system will be tested individually, obviously, with the uh, Native Instruments Audio 2 plugged in via a passive hub into the single USB port. The tests are going to be primarily in Cubase. I mean, there's two tests that I've got sorted out already because, I mean, I know it sounds silly, but one of the problems I have is I've got three different computers. I can't authorize all my software on every computer very easily. That gets very troublesome and <laughs> difficult. And so I can't have an identical suite on each particularly, or at least I can, but it just takes a long time to sort all those sorts of things out. So I'm going to try to go the easy route. The easy route is to use Cubase, because Cubase runs off a dongle, so I can install it on all of them. So Cubase, that's a good start. I'm also going to probably use Ableton Live because you can run a demo version of that and I don't have to authorize it on every system. I can just save the project on one system and then move that project to the other and just use it in demo mode. That'll work. And I don't need to show everything working in every single different sort of way. We just want a comparison. So I'll be using the Doorbench test as a quick plug-in comparison. I'll be using my own Halley and Polyphony test as a quick virtual instrument so that it can be helpful to you in choosing either a new system or an older system and just, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? I don't know, that seems to be why I do these things. Who knows, but let's get on with it. Right, I'm gonna set the benchmarks with the Surface Pro 6. Now, I did a whole other video on the Surface Pro 6, so I've already done these tests, but doing them again ain't gonna do me any harm and makes it just easier to fit it in here rather than trying to copy and paste tests in from previous places. So this is Doorbench. The idea of Doorbench is that you have 40 sine wave tracks in Cubase over which you insert a compressor plugin, a particular plugin, a RealX plugin. You can get all of this, the test projects and everything from doorbench.com along with instructions on how to use it. So there's a little musical project in here. You keep inserting the plugin, turning them on, and it gets to a point where it can't cope anymore and it crackles. And that is your benchmark. And we're gonna see what the comparison is. If you're using a big desktop, almighty i9 computer, then it will run every single plugin in every single slot over every single track. That's fine. That's not what this is. This is a Surface. This is a Surface Pro. You know, we're gonna be able to run somewhere between 50 and 100, I would say, which is not bad going really. So this project is saved from the last time I used it, and currently we have 70 plugins loaded. So I've got a row of 40 all the way across the top. This is the plugin in question. There you go, it's the Reexcom standalone version. It's a multi-compressor, what's it thingy, which is good. It uses up quite a bit of CPU speed on each instance. And we currently have 70 of them loaded across all of the tracks in here. So I'll play the project, I'll enable more plugins, we'll see the performance meter creep up over here, and at the point that it glitches, we'll back off in order to get a proper stable reading, and then that will be the one that the other two have to try to match up to. We shall see.
There we go, we've got a glitch there. So that's about stable at 74 plugins. The idea behind the polyphony test is to load up loads and loads of instances of the Halion Sonic SCE plugin that comes with Cubase 10. In each one, have a different instrument loaded, and then we hold some notes, up to eight notes, I think it is, through it and put that on a loop and sustain it. And again, you just keep adding more instruments until it crackles. I have a full load of 64 instruments loaded and we just enable them as we want to add more instruments. I mean, it's, it's an interesting way of doing it simply because all of the instruments are different. So it's not running the same instrument on each one. Some of them uh, have sustain notes, some of them don't, some of them trigger differently, some of them use a lot of voices, some of them only use a couple of voices. So it's a little bit more real worldy, a little bit more intangible, but should be able to give us a good comparison. So here are our notes, which are gonna go through all of the Hallions loaded down here, and currently I have 45 of them active. Let's give this a go. You can see that there's still room on the audio performance meter, so we're gonna enable a couple more. Okay, that looks like it's about a crap out at 47. Let's try another instrument. Yeah. So it starts uh, crapping out at 48. I'll take that one off and maybe a couple more just to let it recover. So there you go, 47 instances of Halion Sonic. Now Halion Sonic isn't a particularly intensive plugin, it's a sample based instrument. It's not that heavy on the CPU, but being able to run 45, 46, 47 instruments is pretty darn good, I think. So that again is our benchmark. Now, let's get into the 2017 model to see how that compares. Quick tip here, if after running a whole load of updates, which is something that I've done on this computer today, you may find that you lose your advanced settings for the power options in order to do the whole 100%, 99% thing on the CPU, the minimum and maximum processor usage. Now, if that happens, what you have to do is go into the registry editor, reg edit, and fiddle around with CS enabled again. Now, I've detailed this in my tweak videos before, but basically, if you search for CS enabled, you should find that it'll end up being under something like local machine system current control set control power. That's gonna be the place and it will be set to one. It needs to be set to zero, but Windows keeps setting it back to one because it doesn't want you messing with the power settings. It's very jealous of the power settings on the surface because it's trying to keep the system under control in a particular thermal, environment because the cooling system within the surface is not great. It's as best that they could do and it's got better with each generation but it needs to be kept under a certain amount of control or they will just get too hot and start throttling and that's what they're trying to prevent. But we actually need a little bit more than that because we want to restrict the processor to a certain place for very very similar reasons but in order to make the CPU stable. So this is what you need to do. Put CS enabled to zero and then reboot. And now, as you can see, our, all our power options are back. Hooray! Minimum and maximum set to 99% in order to prevent it from going into too much of a turbo mode. That should keep everything under control. Right, Surface Pro 2017. I've got the same project loaded. I've got, at the moment, 70 plugins loaded. Let's see how it fares. Not so good. <laughs> okay, let's go back a bit and see if we can pull it under control.
Okay, that's looking like 63. Maybe 64 at a pinch. But if I try to do anything, it's now, the processor is so full, it's very difficult to do anything at all. Yeah. So let's call that 63. I should be writing this down. Polyphony test then, same project loaded. 45 instruments currently loaded and the Surface Pro 6 got up to 47.48, I think it was. See, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that's 49 instruments, but the system is completely chock full. I mean, that's it's kind of interesting. Let's try 50. There we go. So it can't handle 50, but it seems to be able to handle 49 which is more than the Surface Pro 6. Mm. Now, what's interesting, I think, just observationally, is that the 2017 model seems to allow you to get really up to all of the processor. We have the Surface Pro 6, it tends to crap out, you know, just before it gets there. So there's, you get a glitch, but the system is still, there's still room to run stuff within it. But with the 2017, it lets you go all the way to the max so that you can't do anything else in the system at all. Hmm. Let's try the Surface Pro 4. Right, Surface Pro 4, same project, door bench. Let's see how many plugins. Yeah, that ain't working. So that's the 70. So let's drop down to a level that the 2017 said that it had. Okay, I've gone down to 60. All right, let's take it down from there. 58. Okay, so at the moment we've got Surface Pro 4 on 58, we've got Surface Pro 2017 on 63, and the Surface Pro 6 on 74. That seems like quite regular, normal processor generation jumps. You know, a little bit more performance. A, what, you could call it, a, uh, from that's gone five to five, about a 10% performance boost from Surface Pro 4 to 2017 and another sort of 15% on top of that, going from 2017 to 2026. I don't know, I'm making up these numbers just very roughly. That's all I'm trying to show a little bit of a comparison, but that gives you some idea. Let's check out the polyphony. Polyphony test, same project, 45 Hallions loaded. It's just holding it together. Now, 46 is too much. Now, 45 is a little bit too much, really. Yeah, that's much more like it. 44, then. 44 instances of Hallion. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I just went back to test the 2017 because it unexpectedly did better in the polyphony test than the Surface Pro 6. So I've loaded up the project again and no, it still does it. Check the audio settings, check everything else. Yeah, no, it's right. It's good. It can do 49 Hallions, whereas the Surface Pro 6 can do 47. Surface Pro 4 can do 44. Why? Why? Well, that's a good question. I mean, to throw a guess in there, I think it's probably to do with how Cubase handles multiple cores. 
handling a dual core system is potentially easier, simpler than handling a quad core system. And it may just be that it's using up these threads more efficiently than it is on the quad core system. Quad core system is also running slower. So even though it has four cores running at 1.6, this has two cores running at 2.4, I think. So, you know, it, it's never a direct correlation. You're not getting four times 1.6 compared to two times 2.4 doesn't quite work exactly like that because they're different generations. It's not just down to the speed of that processor. There's other things going on as well. And that means to me that we need to look at some other bits of software so that we don't depend purely on Cubase. But that was an interesting comparison in itself. The plugin counts seem to go right. You know, 58, 63, 74, good steps. Polyphony. <laughs> 44, 49, 47. Hmm. Odd, but we're going with it. So I think, I think that's going to do for tonight. I'm going to come back tomorrow and think up some fresh tests to do using probably Ableton Live. Suddenly thought I might use Reason. Something along those lines. See what else we can discover. Right, we're back for another day of testing. I just wanted to add a couple more tests to complement the ones I've done in Cubase. So I've got a test in Ableton Live and I've got a test in Propellerhead Reason. That'll do it, I think. The test in Live is using Ableton Live 10 Suite and using the Suite demo song. I've just sort of put it all together so all the tracks are running at once. So it's not perhaps as tuneful as it originally was, just having that going on a loop. Then what I'm going to do is duplicate tracks until it starts to crackle. And that'll give us our benchmark for that machine. So this is the Surface Pro 6. This is the Ableton Live demo song. It sounds a bit like this. And this is quite an intense track. It's got a lot of stuff going on there. It's using all of the inbuilt stuff in Ableton Live and lots of effects and wavetable stuff and FM stuff and all sorts of bits and pieces going on over the course of 16 tracks. And it's already up to sort of 50, 60, 70% CPU. So I'm going to duplicate a couple of tracks, keep it going and see how far we get. Yeah, there is the odd click in there. So it's peaking at about 70% CPU and it's giving us 20 tracks. So let's make that our Surface Pro 6. So 20 tracks. Now for the reason test, I've done something very similar to what I did in the Cubase Hallian tests. I've got just a bunch of MIDI playing some sustained notes, which I'm gonna run through a bunch of synths because reason is all about the synths after all. I've taken the synth patches from the Showcase collection, just taken a bunch over. They're usually Combinator patches or Europa patches. So up to date, relatively intensive ones. And so far I've got 13 tracks uh, running the MIDI test and I might need to add some and more. But obviously in Reason, that th those 13 tracks with Combinators translates to an enormous rack of bits and pieces. Not that that's important, we're just looking for a comparison as opposed to an ultimate what can this machine run type test. So let's see where we are. It's always good to make sure that you've got the correct audio interface selected. That would be good. Okay, that's got no trouble going on in there. <laughs> that's quite nice. The DSP meter is down here in this little bottom right hand corner and that seems untroubled. So I'm going to add a few more. See if we can get a bit more 
stuff going on. Okay, I added a ton more instruments, but now it is starting to glitch. So let's start undoing some of this. It's still clicking in there, so I'm going to get rid of another one. Okay, that sounds good. That's all the way up to The Rat's Dead is the name of the track. Let's see if I can count up how many actual tracks that is. So the Service Pro 6 has given me 30 tracks in Reason before it craps out. And if you want to have a look at the rack quick, you can see just how much stuff is in here. Acres and acres and acres and tons and tons of combinators which have got acres and acres of stuff in it as well. Groovy. Let's take that to the next machine and see how that fares. Surface Pro 2017 then. Ableton Live test, same test as before. Let's see how many tracks I can add. So that's looking pretty good at 23 tracks, which is more than what the Surface Pro 6 gave us. Okay, that's definitely glitching in there now. So that seems to be at about 27 tracks, which is significantly more than the Surface Pro 6. Very interesting. The processor going up to about 80%. So it's like the Surface Pro 2017 can just handle more of the CPU being used. Hmm. The reason test on the Surface Pro 2017. I'm using exactly the same project that I had on the Surface Pro 6, which was the limit of what the Surface Pro 6 could do. <laughs> See, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> so let's take out a synth. It's close, it's not quite there. Right, that seems we've got it. So that was all the way down to Norwegian Boy is that particular one. Now how many channels, tracks, bits of stuff is that? That's 21, 21 tracks, significantly less than the Surface Pro 6. Oh, this is what we like. We love this inconsistency. It just keeps life exciting and alive. Hmm. Surface Pro 4 then. Surface Pro 4, same Ableton Live project. Got 16 tracks at the moment. Surface Pro 6 did 20, Surface 2017 did 27. Let's see how we do. Oh, it crashed. Now let's pull it back together again. Oh, no, there's a glitch. Okay, right, I think the Service Pro 4 has had enough at <laughs> this point. It's now going all over the place, which means it's probably got a little bit of hot and it's decided to clock down. 
So it seems pretty good at 20 tracks at about 70% CPU. It could possibly go higher, but we suddenly had this alarming moving aboutness, which is just one of those things, particularly with the Surface Pro 4, its processor was not the most consistent or tamed. It would tend to go all over the place and was also one of the ones that you could put a fan on the back and that would actually help. That's not something that worked on the Surface Pro 6. I have tested that out. So I'm gonna try for 21 tracks again, just to see whether it can hold it together. Yeah, so there was a glitch again. So I think that's really, realistically, 20 tracks. The funny thing is though, that's exactly what the Surface Pro 6 did. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, reason test, Surface Pro 4, same project. Okay, yeah, no good. So let's go back a few. Yeah, we're hitting some problems now with the Surface Pro 4. It seems to be going a bit all over the place. Okay, then we cracked it. Strange thing is that Surface Pro 4 is really not using its potential in this particular test. I mean, all we've got is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven tracks. Eleven tracks. That's not that great. I mean, that's okay. There's still a whole bunch of synths and stuff in there. And I've used Reason on the Surface Pro 4 before without any problems at all. It's just interesting how the different doors work together. Right, I just want to go back to the Ableton test on the Surface Pro 6 to see whether I did anything wrong. The answer to that is no, <laughs> it's about right. How interesting. So what do we make of all this? What conclusions can we possibly draw? Well, I don't know. It's always a little bit difficult with these services because they never quite do exactly what you hope they will. They're always a little bit inconsistent. They're always a little bit, oh, I don't know. And that's why I like to run different tests because it shows different things. And what I hope to do or hope to have done in this video is just get across some idea of how they compare. Can't give absolutes on this because it depends on what you're doing. It depends on your projects and your plugins and what door you're using and all those different bits and pieces because they vary. They're different. Also the audio interface is it's just different. So this should give you an idea, but Again, you can't take everything as absolute gospel because it just depends on the test and the situation. So what facts have we pulled out of this? Well, I mean, my little piece of paper here, uh, well, we know that the Surface Pro 6 wins in terms of sheer plug-in count. It's got a good nose ahead of the 2017 and the Surface Pro 4. However, when running a polyphony test in Halion, Surface Pro 2017 did better, did better with this trailing behind Surface Pro 4. Then when we took that into Ableton Live, it was the 2017 that came out on top with the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Pro 6 kind of neck and neck in that particular environment. I mean, that's, that's sort of troubling and interesting. And then we go to Reason where the Surface Pro 6 trounces, trounces the competition by three times as much. I mean, 30 tracks of a load of stuff, uh, the Surface Pro 2017, about 20, 21 tracks, and this one, 10 tracks. You know, a massive difference, range of results. And so, well, there you are, those are the facts. I mean, pulling it together, I think my commentary on that would be that different doors treat multiple cores differently. You know, Reason maybe is well in there with a quad core system, and so gives fantastic performance. Whereas A was alive, perhaps not so much. Perhaps it prefers a dual core system. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe it's to do with that. Maybe it's to do with the cooling profile. Certainly on the Surface Pro 4, it's always been known to be a bit up and down. You can't hope 
to get up into 80 90 percent cpu and have it all nice and lovely and stable it will move about like a crazy thing so in terms of stability the 2017 definitely was better than the surface pro 4 and the surface pro 6 is similar it's good too so i am completely happy to leave the surface pro 4 behind drop that one out this is not the one that you want they may be really good value at the moment but i would not go as far as recommending the surface pro 4. surface pro 2017 however is decent gave decent results it beat the surface pro 6 in a couple of tests and lost in others so what do we think about that i don't know i guess you could say they're comparable the Surface Pro 6 should be better because it's got four cores going on, but it just depends on the software and whether it can take full advantage of that. Also with the 2017, it let you get really close up to the full processor usage, which is great because every gigahertz helps. Whereas with the Surface Pro 6, you were really looking at 70%. So there's room there for improvement on a Surface Pro 6 if you can get stable enough software, stable enough audio interface, stable enough firmware updates to the Surface Pro 6. All that sort of thing. So I think in drawing it together is that if you are going to buy a secondhand Surface, then the 2017 model is a decent buy. It's going to give you a lot of good performance, stable performance, and a stable CPU. Surface Pro 4, not so much. But the other question being then, would the Surface Pro 6 really give you a dramatic increase over previous models? No, in reason, it did. Everything else, it gives a bit. It gives a bit, but you know, you've seen the results now. That's what we have. That's all we can go on. If you've got the i7 version, will you be able to do more? Yeah, a little bit, sure, yeah, why not? But all I can demonstrate is what I've done. So I can't tell you exactly. You're gonna to have to try that for yourself. But there you go. Three generations of Surface Pro all tested alongside each other with some inconclusive <laughs> results. Perfect, that's what we like. But all in all, Surface Pro 6, Working like a dream. Service Pro 17, never had a problem with it through its whole time. Service Pro 4 was a nightmare to start with, got a lot better, but it's still not really up there with the best of their work. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. Do stick around on my channel for all sorts of news, reviews, tips and tricks about synthesizers, software, surfaces, Eurorack, crazy stuff, all music technology stuff. And I have a monthly roundup called the Molten Music Monthly where I put together all of the best gear that's come out in the last month. So join me for that. There's also regular live streams where we get to chat about all this sort of gear. And if you're feeling really brave, then come and support me on Patreon where you can throw me a few dollars to help me make these videos. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes.